What's going on guys, it's Scott here and welcome back to Fudge Mopper. Today I have a remastered build to share with you and this powerful Argonian was never really given enough time to truly shine. The old video was only 4 minutes and 20 seconds, so we're here to fix that and flesh it out a whole lot more. And don't worry because with these already deadly fire spells you'll still be able to blaze it. This is Bone Scales. This Argonian battle mage garbs in the bones of his kills acquired his nickname for the lasting impression he left on friends and foes alike. His scaled skin, covered in the carved skeleton of some mighty beast, is quite a badass sight to behold. But Bone Scales isn't just a cool aesthetic. He is as effective with his weapons as he is intimidating. Bone Scales once served the King of Argonia, and it's safe to say he's one of the most powerful battle mages in all of Black Marsh, if not the whole of Tamriel. With a war axe of sharpened bone, a unique staff, and an arsenal of fire and sun spells, this Argonian battle mage can use ranged and melee combat strategies in sync to take out all his enemies effectively. Before we get into the build, don't forget the timestamps can be found in the description below to help you navigate the video. But with that said, let's kick things off with Bone Scales, Race, Standing Stone, and Stats. Bone Scales is of course an Argonian, meaning he can invoke the power of his hissed skin to recover health 10 times faster for 60 seconds once per day. He is also 50% resistance to disease and can breathe underwater. His Argonian blood gives him a bonus of plus 5 to restoration as well. As for his standing stone, use the lover early on for consistent skill leveling, then use the Atronarch for resistance against mages. With this stone you'll have 50% spell absorption as well as 50 extra points of magicka, the only down side is that your magicka regeneration will be 50% slower, however that is later countered by some restoration perks that we get. Bone scale stat spread will be 50% health to keep him alive in combat, and then 50% magicka for plenty of spell casting in both destruction and restoration. Our enchanting will decrease magicka casting costs significantly, but not 100%, so having some stat investment in magicka is definitely worth it overall. Bone scales was born in Black Marsh, close to the pinnacle of the province. He grew up near Hellstrom and this city-state was so deep into the heart of Argonia that it was nearly impossible for non-Argonians to reach. If a man or mer wandered the city, it was likely they had been escorted by Argonians on some important business. The closer to the center of Black Marsh you got, the stronger the xenophobia. The political climate was tense in Hellstrom and here the King of Argonia resided, dictating foreign policy, or the lack thereof, and isolating his people from the rest of Tamriel any way he could. Bone Scales was an investor in these political stances as a youth. In his small village, the inhabitants were more focused on survival as the surrounding swamps were brimming with deadly creatures. He knew little of the outside world and was far too focused on his training and education. As a capable body born without any handicap in the king's dominion, he was expected to serve under the king in some capacity, and Bone Scales liked the idea of serving a purpose as great as this. He took quickly to destruction and restoration magic, training in the company of royalty and and enamored heroes. Unlike many of the children plucked from their homes to join the king's forces, Bone Scales was familiar with danger and he had seen his father kill countless wild beasts. By adulthood, Bone Scales was one of the most competent battle mages in Hellstrom, and after a visit to the training field, the king himself chose Bone Scales to join his personal guard. This privilege gave him many new luxuries, including enough wealth to acquire tough leather armor from the best tanner in the capital. But he wanted to stand out, representing the value values of his small, nameless village, and so he bought a staff of fine oak and a masterfully crafted war axe. With his new tools, he ventured out alone into the bogs looking for game. Grazing beside the mangroves, he spotted the flicker of electricity. The only time sparks like this were seen in the wild was when one had found a wamasu. He stalked the large lizard dragon, and with a well-placed blow of his axe, he carved the beast's skull. What followed was a bloody, gut-churning task. He skinned the beast, removing the hide and the flesh, and then he washed the bones in the murky brown waters of the bubbling swamp. He collected as many bones as he could carry and made his way back to civilization. When he entered the royal court the following day to begin his duties in the presence of regality, his steps were accentuated by the sound of rattling bones. He wore no common armor. Instead, he wore the bones of the mighty Wamasu. The king stared at him for a long moment and then laughed. The imposing sight of his new battle mage would make any assassin think twice before pulling out a dagger. Bone Scales found it amusing. He had done so little in his time serving the king, yet his name was being whispered in every inn and alley across Hellstrom. Some of the human mercenaries had even given him a nickname. Bone Scales, they called him. Bone Scales. 
He liked that. With his war axe on his hip and his staff fastened over his back, Bonescale stood at the king's side as one of his most trusted bodyguards for years. So many able soldiers seemed wasted here. Even though he hadn't strayed far from the city, Bonescales knew this place was practically impenetrable, yet the king still spoke of perils hidden in every shadow. Since the Argonian invasion and the subsequent response from the Great House Redoran, the older generation, the king included, seemed to be full of resentment. There was little talk of Black Marsh's place in the affairs of the continent. The king only seemed interested in alienating the province from outsiders altogether. When men or Mer were found within the Argonian land without an Argonian to vouch for them, they were captured or killed as per the king's request. Bonescales stood by as all these meetings took place and all of this legislation passed. Licking their wounds, his people were dooming themselves to an existence of stagnant isolation. On a typical day in royal court, Bonescales' guard duties were interrupted by a nervous courier. He approached Bonescales wielding a letter. The young Argonian seemed nervous, as if he was afraid of being associated with the sender. Bonescales examined the scroll. It was sealed by an unmistakable wax print, the Dragon of the Empire. He took the letter to the king's personal chambers and presented it on his breakfast table. The king took his knife from the sausage and rolled the scroll over with it. He saw the sigil on the seal and scowled. In one smooth motion, he cut the seal off and used his free hand to spread the scroll out on the table. Bonescales could tell this wasn't the first letter to reach him from the same sender. The Imperials once again wanted to work with the Argonians. Bonescales knew little of the Empire's motivations, but he knew full well that Black Marsh had plenty of able bodies wasting away in the swamps, just waiting to be applied to a real cause. With a scoff, the King tore the letter in half, vowing never to work with man nor mer for as long as he lived. Frustrated, Bonescales dismissed himself. He was sick of Argonia's abstention. Was he supposed to live and die in Hellstrom's royal court, protecting the king from phantoms and rumors of threats that didn't exist? Argonians across the continent were being subjected to discrimination, and with the attitude of Black Marsh, killing all who differ from them, Bonescales could hardly blame them. That night he came to his conclusion, it was time to leave. If he was going to make his mark on Tamriel for the good of his people, it wouldn't be within the confines of Argonia. And so he set out on his path north and west. He left Black Marsh west of Stormhold and followed the mountain path. He should have researched the lands of Cyrodiil and Skyrim before leaving, but Black Marsh had been so far removed from the rest of the world. Before he could decide which way to go, he was captured high in the mountains by an Imperial patrol. After escaping his demise in Helgen, Bonescales will first focus on survival, fashioning a weapon and a staff from the materials available, and then he will get on the hunt, getting his hands on a new set of bone armor. Once he is sufficiently equipped, he will resume his duty of diffusing the rampant tension between the Argonians and the other races. He will strive to release Argonians across the province of oppression, and he will also fight for the good of Skyrim in a hopes that it will change the views of men and Myrrh, inspiring them to respect Argonians as much as their own. While his fighting ability with both one-handed weapons and magic is his strong suit, he doesn't just want to kill mindlessly. He harbors no ill will towards non-Argonians like his former monarch, and therefore will reserve killing for those who wish him harm. If he can change the minds of humans, elves, and beasts alike, improving their opinions of the Argonians, then he has succeeded in his task. As for factions, he will join the Dawn Guard using his understanding of magic to to defeat the vampires and learn the power of sun spells. He will join the College of Winterhold to further improve his spellcasting abilities. He will follow the main story, firstly to hone his skills, but secondly, having an Argonian as the prophesized dragonborn may seriously sway some opinions, leading many Nords to revere and respect Argonians. This continues with the Dragonborn DLC as well. He will carry out Azura's quest, choosing to acquire the Black Star, and he will focus on all the quests that fit his role-playing. For example, helping the Argonian at the Rift and docks. Any quest in which he can help the downtrodden Argonians is perfect. But now we have the Bone Scales backstory, roleplaying, and factions outlined. Here is how it will work with his skills, spells, perks, and his overall playstyle. The main skills for this build will be one-handed destruction, restoration, heavy armor, smithing, and enchanting. For anyone out there who saw the old bare bones version of this build, you'll notice that restoration is all new. Before we talk specific perks though, these are the spells you want to get your hands on. Fire spells like Fireball for area damage and Incinerate for high damage are great primary hard-hitting spells. Then, sun damage spells like Sun 
gunfire will work great against the undead, which are numerous in Skyrim. Also, for undead, you can use restoration spells like Turn Undead. Standard healing spells are a given, and Stendar's Aura not only looks fantastic, but provides fantastic area protection in the darkest of dungeons. Shouts aren't too important, but Fire Breath fits the theme too, so you can always use that in combat. But with that said, let's talk essential perks. First, we have One Handed, and this is where half of the Bone Scales combat prowess comes from. Say what you will about Argonians, but you can't brave the most uninhabitable swamps filled with obscure creatures without some serious skill with weaponry. From the One Handed skill tree, take the middle branch up to and including both Savage Strike and Critical Charge. Savage Strike will boost your standing power attacks by 25% as well as opening access to decapitations. Then we have the other side of Bone Scale's damage output, whether it be his staff or his palm. Bone Scales scorches his foes with deadly fire spells. From the destruction skill tree, go for the left branch up to intense flames, and then the third branch up to expert destruction. As you'll be focusing on fire spells, augmented flames is great as it adds 50% damage to your fire-based destruction spells. To defeat the undead and preserve his life when everything around him is after his head, Bone Scales calls upon the Restoration School of Magic. From the restoration skill tree, we suggest taking the first and second branch, then fourth up to adept restoration. Top it off with two ranks of recovery, combined with your sun spells, Necromage will make all of your spells more effective against the undead. Bone Scales was given his nickname by impressed foreigners. They took one look at his intricate armor, carved and crafted from the skeletons of his kills, and that was enough to make them keep a safe distance. His trademark armor isn't easy to wear, but it sure is formidable. From the heavy armor skill tree, we recommend following the left branch up to conditioning. This perk will remove all weight from heavy armor and prevent it from slowing down your movement speed. In order to maintain and empower his weapons and armor, Bone Scales turns to smithing and enchanting. Making armor from the bones of killed beasts isn't a common request for your local smithy, so his refined taste can only be executed by himself. From the smithing skill tree, grab Arcane Blacksmith, and then the right hand branch up to Dragon Smithing. And then from enchanting, go for the middle branch up to and including extra effect, as well as Fire Enchanter. With all of these skills, spells, and perks sorted, this is how it will all come together together in the Bone Scales playstyle. As a battle mage, Bone Scales will combine his staff or destruction magic in his left hand with a war axe in the right hand. With restoration, you can switch either of your hands out to heal. You'll generally switch out your left so your magic can be focused on healing you. Also, when dealing with undead, you can utilize sun spells instead of fire. As for gear, Bone Scales will wear a full set of dragon plate armor minus the helmet. As well as this, use a bone hawk ring and necklace. Until you can get your hands on dragon plate armor, bone mold armor from the Dragonborn DLC makes for a perfect placeholder. Enchant the chest piece with Fortify Destruction and Fortify Restoration. Enchant the boots and gauntlets with Fortify One-Handed and then any additional enchantment of your choice. Enchant the Bone Hawk Jewelry with Fortify Restoration and Destruction. Make sure all of that armor is smithed up. Your weapons of choice will be a fully smithed up Dragon Bone War Axe enchanted with Fire Damage and Fiery Soul Trap and also wielding the Eye of Melka. This unique staff does 40 points of fire damage in a 15 meter to radius when cast. The Fiery Soul Trap enchantment on your War Axe will go perfectly with the Black Star, so you can make sure you get that by betraying Azura in her Daedric quest as early as you can. And there you have it guys, subscribe to Fudge Muppet if you're new to the channel and would like to see more, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up to show your support. This has been our latest remastered build, Bone Scales. Don't forget that timestamps for video navigation can be found just below in the description, along with links to our social media accounts and our Twitch channel. As always, thanks so much for watching guys, I've been Scott, and I look forward to nerding out with you again in the next one.